Hey guys, so today I'm bringing you the second part of last week's contortion video. So today it's all about upper body stretches. So last week we focused on leg flexibility and this time it's upper back, shoulders and neck. This is what helps with your chest stands, your walkovers, your bridges and more. So if you do want to get these moves, it's really important to build up your flexibility in this area. A lot of the stretches are partner stretches, so you will get more out of it if you have someone to do it with. But don't worry, you can still do solo stretches. Come here. Show them what you've just done. This is what I have to put up with on a daily basis. Why? I wanted to let you off. Anyway, I'm going to hand you over to Pixie now, who will explain a little bit more and do running commentary throughout the stretches. So enjoy. So now we are moving on to shoulder stretches. And shoulder flexibility is really important for contortion. It makes up a big part of your back bend, and people don't realise it. In contortion, you want to stretch everything to avoid stretching your lower back because lower back pain is really common and the lower back is really delicate. So if you can get more shoulder flexibility, it will take the pressure off your lower back and help you achieve lots of different tricks. So if you just find a wall or a ledge or some bars and push down through your shoulders, have a partner, get them to put a little bit of pressure on your back. These are partner stretches from now. So if one of you lies on your front and with your chin on the floor so you can see forwards and your arms shoulder width apart and you're going to push down on their armpits so that their armpits touch the floor. Put all your weight on one side and then all your weight on the other side. Try and get rid of the gap between the floor and their armpit. Turn your head away from your partner and the arm that is being stretched. And if you're stretching your partner, put your hand on their shoulder and get them to put their hand on their shoulder. And then push down on the shoulder and pull up on the elbow at the same time. Make sure the arm stays right next to the head and is in line. Don't take it out of line, away from the body. You should feel this one down your tricep. And now we're going to stretch your pecs. So if you link your fingers on the back of your head and then get your partner to squeeze your elbows together. Hold on to your own elbows really tight and then if you're stretching a partner grab onto their elbows and if they're quite flexible you could just sit down on them and then push your knees in just below their shoulder blades and pull on their elbows at the same time and you should feel a point where you can't do it anymore so we're still stretching the shoulders not the back so don't lift them up too high if they're not as flexible, you could just put a bit of pressure on their back with your foot and then pull up on the elbows at the same time. This one's quite intense, so just be really careful if you're not used to it. So we're going to take this into the upper back, neck, as well as the shoulders now. So if you go onto your front, make sure your hips are directly over your knees. Don't sit on your heels in a child's pose. Your chest and your chin might be quite far away from the floor and that's fine, your partner can still push down 
on your chest and maybe a bit on your shoulders as well. So if your shoulders, chest and chin were flat on the floor, you could get a block and put it right on the edge of your chin and do exactly the same thing to lift your head up a bit and stretch your neck a little bit more and you can go as high as you want with that if you still need more. Make sure your chin is right on the tip of the block and not in the middle of it or you will choke a bit. And then get your partner to push down again on your upper back and shoulders and armpits. Now we're going to do a neck stretch so be really careful with this because stretching your neck is quite intense and if you're not used to it it can feel quite strange it doesn't really feel like other kinds of stretching so if you just put your hands right on the tip of your chin and then try and push back through your shoulders like you did with the other stretch to try and aim to get your armpits and your chest on the floor again don't do it for too long because it's quite intense so I'm going to do a similar stretch on the wall now. You could use a stretching resistance band to keep your shoulders together and make it a bit more intense on your shoulders. If you just put the loops past your elbows and have it on a setting that keeps your elbows quite tight together for you. And make sure your hips are at a right angle with your feet and your body. And then try and push your chest towards the wall and keep your chin on the wall you might have quite a big gap between your chest and the wall and that's fine and then if you if you are flat on the wall you can bend your knees slightly and slide down the wall a bit more and then try and straighten your knees where you get to and you could get your partner to push your chest to touch the wall and you can get a bit more into your upper back if you do this on your knees and if you've got tight hamstrings, it's helpful as well as it won't put any pressure down the back of your legs like the standing version will. Again, make sure your body, hips and knees are at a right angle from the wall. And if you are quite flexible and you felt flat with that one, you can take this into your neck which is really good for doing things like chest stands to get your neck more flexible. Your neck plays a big part in your back bend as well and takes the pressure off your lower back. So if you just put your hands right on the tip of your chin and try and get into the same position again with your hips, body and feet at a right angle from the wall. Slide your elbows up the wall and try and get your chest flat on the wall. Don't worry if you're quite far away. If it is easy, you can put your elbows closer together and even go onto your knuckles. And if you've got tight hamstrings, you might prefer to do this on your knees. And now we're going to do bridges. Um, we're going to use a grippy mat because it's really important to have good grip on your feet so you can push into your upper back and shoulders with this. So if you don't have a bridge or don't have a good bridge yet, you could do it on your partner's ankles, which is much easier. And keep reminding them to keep their arms straight if you're being stretched. So when you're doing a bridge, you want to really feel it in your upper back and shoulders and not in your lower back. And you do this by trying to straighten your legs and push your weight over your shoulders. And you just pull gently on the back of their shoulders to pull their body towards you and so that their legs straighten. Try and keep your feet still, don't walk them closer to you. It's not about trying to get your feet as close to your hands as you can, it's about feeling in your upper back and shoulders. Don't go onto your tiptoes, keep your feet really flat, keep your feet parallel, don't turn them out. And if it's easy, you can put your feet close together, make it a bit more intense. So if you're not doing it on the ankles, you can put your feet by your partner's hands to stop them from falling and just pull really gently on their upper back and shoulders towards you. 
once again thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions please comment them in the comments below yeah thank you so much see you soon Ugh.